Today we're going to be looking at something that is not at all security related, uh, but it is a personal curiosity of mine, and that is these power bricks. My name is Jake Jepson. I'm a security researcher here at Red Balloon Security. So if you've ever tried to open one of these up before, uh, you'll notice pretty quickly that they are filled with epoxy. They likely do that for safety reasons. Maybe in the beginning they also did it to protect their IP and whatnot. I think today though it mainly just remains as a safety thing. We got a couple of them here, a five volt one amp. So the most basic you can go. Up next we have a old Apple one, five volt one amp. Uh, interesting that it's so much larger. And then we get into, this is a almost brand new. Uh, we just bought this at DEF CON, but it's not a one of the new GAN ones. It's just a regular basic one. It is 65 watts. It has two outputs. It does a bunch of different voltages. So five volts, nine volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. And then we have one of the GAN ones uh, or GAN prime, I guess, which is also 65 watts, but you'll notice it's a fair amount smaller than it. And that that was kind of the whole big improvement they had uh, with the GAN stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at these, see what the difference is. So up first, I'll go ahead and get this guy chucked up. Right away, we can kind of see a couple of components in here. These little spring looking items around here, I think are capacitors, just given that I opened them up before and they are kind of these long rolled items. Uh, so I think these are those electrolytic capacitors in here. As we tilt it, the transformer becomes a lot easier to see that it's actually a transformer. So you can see the transformer here, the I think is maybe a ceramic capacitor, but we can definitely see the outline of these electrolytic capacitors over here. So it looks like we have a small one in the back and then two larger ones right there. And then maybe one over here on the left one. So let's go ahead and look at the Apple one next. Uh, this one again does five volts, one amp. Interestingly though, it has a fair amount more going on in it. So maybe that's electrical conditioning or just safety measures. Not really sure. We, we can see at least one chip here. And then we of course have our large transformer. Looks like we have some inductors, a capacitor here. These, uh, these guys over here. So with resistors, I, I typically see like they're a whole bunch of wire wrapped around it. These have a like they, they look like they have like this spark gap in the middle of them. If we look at it from side view, we can see the big iron layers for the transformers. We can see iron circle for the inductor over there. We have this other little inductor right here. This is maybe a ceramic cap. This looks like another smaller transformer. And then maybe that's another capacitor there in the back. Let's, let's get a better look at that one. I think that's gonna be a capacitor, not 100% sure. But it is interesting that for something that outputs pretty much the exact same stuff. We just have so much going on. Well, let's take a look at the you know, very new uh, anchor. Let's see. So this one is the new anchor one. Let me tilt this to the side so we can see a more flat view of it. We have two transformers in here. Uh, interestingly, on this one, we do have two ports. So maybe each port has its own transformer. We have a couple of caps, a couple of inductors. Uh, um, let's see. A very large capacitor here that is sideways. So let's look at that head on. We have these two components here, which might be ceramic capacitors, although typically the ceramic capacitors that I see are a lot thinner. Doesn't look like we have much going on in terms of chips here, other than up in this corner, it looks like we have maybe one chip here, and then we have one vertical PCB over the USB-C right here. Uh, we, we have what appears to be a vertical PCB instead of here with a chip on it and maybe two chips, but at least one chip there and the other soak eight that we saw over at the top. Never mind, on here it's now the bottom. I flipped it around. Yeah, so definitely a little bit more going on. So we, we have this capacitor that's in the front. Given that we have these bond wires, I suspect they might be inside of like a chip. Oh yeah, yeah, because we, we also have the legs right here as well. So we have the legs here, we have bond wires going to this leg over here. We have a big leg in the middle. It has this pretty large trace that comes out the back of it. That's definitely an odd pin out. Yeah, it maybe could be temperature. That has an interesting component. So the one we're looking at now is the gallium nitrate one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five capacitors over here. A lot more chips and a lot more vertical PCBs in it. It has three or four vertical PCBs. We have a bond wire going from, we have two traces on this side, two or two legs on this side, I should say two legs on the other side, a bond wire connecting them, and then what looks to be a spike up here. Sweet. Well, take a look at their last ones. This is just a larger power supply. I don't know what this one goes to, but it does eight volts at 9.37 amps. Oh, let's look inside. Not too much 
interesting going on in this one. It looks like everything's just bigger. So we got bigger transformers, bigger capacitors, bigger inductors. Everything's just bigger. Cool. That's all. That's all for today. Thank you.